Hello everyone, welcome to eSparks. Today we are going to see the concepts and the demo on how to create GCP organizations, folders, billing accounts and projects in Google Cloud Platform. If you like this video, please subscribe to eSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. What is GCP organization? To map your enterprise operational structure to Google Cloud and to manage access control and permissions, you need to create GCP organization. Let us take our on-premises as the example. In the on-premises, we will be running our business with our organizational structure. So, in each and every level of your organizational hierarchy, we have access control and permissions for each and every individual. In the same way, if you are adopting Google Cloud, you need to go for GCP organization to gain the advantage of access control and permissions in each and every level, just like your on-premises structure. Let us understand more about GCP organization. Every GCP organization is created at the root top level. We need a domain name for creating GCP organization. In our case, the organizational domain name is vsparks.com. Beneath that, we need to create folders to manage our organizational units. Folders can also have subfolders. We can create projects beneath the folders. Projects are the real resource containers. Within the project, we can create our resources like VMs, storage, virtual network, etc. etc. Let us see how the resource hierarchy is built on a big picture level. We can see the organization is created at the root level. In our case, we are going to create an organization with the domain name called vsparks.com. Beneath this organization, we can create folders just like our organizational units. Organizational units are also called as OUs. Here you can see retail, manufacturing, banking are the three units of our organization. A single OU can have multiple sub OUs, I mean the organizational units. In our case, this manufacturing OU can have sub OUs, for example, like machineries and automobiles. So in our case, we need to add sub folders beneath a manufacturing folder to accommodate the same. Now within the automobile sub OU, we need to create the projects. As we know already, the projects are the real resource containers. So here are the resources beneath the projects. Each and every project is created for different teams and for different purposes. Now, whatever the resources that we are going to consume within the projects will be built. So now, how are we going to manage the billing for our entire organization? That is going to be discussed in the upcoming slides. What are billing accounts? To manage the billing and payments in Google Cloud, we need to create a billing account. We can create multiple billing accounts within the same organization. Who is going to pay for what resources is fully governed by the billing accounts. Basically, there are two types of billing accounts you can create. One is self-service or online account. Second one is invoiced account, which is also called as offline account. In an online account, we will be paying the bills using the online mode of transaction like credit cards, debit cards, net banking, etc. etc. Whereas in an invoiced account, we can pay the bills as a check or a cash to the Google officials who will come and collect the same in our on-premises. Each billing account is connected to a payments profile. Now, what is payments profile? A payments profile will actually stores our name, tax IDs, card details, bank account details of the person 
who is responsible for paying the Google Cloud bills. Usually this person will be from your treasury department and he or she will be called as billing administrator. A single payments profile can be linked to multiple billing accounts. So this is how the structure of our organization looks like including our folders, projects, resources, payments profile and the billing accounts. You can see the payments profile which is connected to two billing accounts. The first billing account is going to pay the bills for test project whereas the second billing account is going to pay for project dev and project prod. Now let us see the demo. These are the things that we are going to do in this demo. As the first step, we are going to create GCP organizations using cloud identity. Google Workspace or G Suite is a bit costly and that's why we are going for cloud identity to create GCP organizations. Just log into this URL to sign up for the cloud identity account. Here mention your business name and other details. You have to remember that you are not going to sign up for the entire features of G Suite or Workspace. Just we are going to consume cloud identity. Here enter a valid email ID and it can be anything. Enter a valid domain name here. In our case, the domain name is vsparks.com. Here we have to use the same name which we had registered with our domain service provider. If the name and the credentials mismatches, then the verification of the domain may fail in cloud identity. To log into the cloud identity or admin console, we need a domain based username and password. Just mention the same here. This user is going to be our super admin of our domain. Mention a valid secondary email address which I am skipping it for now. Validate the CAPTCHA and select Agree and Create Account. By now our cloud identity account would have been created but the domain verification is still pending which we will do in the next steps. Click Start to verify the domain ownership. It will take around 5 to 6 minutes to verify the domain. Now click verify domain and click authorize so that Google will verify the domain on your behalf. In our case our domain is hosted in GoDaddy. This will fail as expected, so we need to go to the second method of verification. This is the second method of verification. In this method, we are going to create a DNS text record in our domain which was given by Google. This record will be validated by Google for our domain verification. This is our domain management page. Just create the text record given by Google. This has also got failed because the text record is not accepted by the domain service provider. So now instead of a text record, you now request for a CNAME record. Now create the same in the domain management page.
that's it all the formalities are done now verify the domain after some time you can see the domain verification is successful now go to the google cloud console with this our first step is completed we have created a gcp organization and we have verified our domain as well Now you can see vsparks.com is created as an organization in GCP console. In the IAM page, you can also see administrator at the rate of vsparks.com is going to be our organizational administrator. So this is the user that we have given at the time of registering our domain in cloud identity. Step two, we are going to create billing accounts. In this video, I'm not going to show it because it involves some financial transactions, but I will be showing where to create it. Go to your navigation menu and click billing and select add a billing account. It will ask your bank account or card details and all. Once that is done, you can see this page. In our case, we created the billing account as an online account. You can also see the free trial credits given by Google as a part of the free trial benefits. Next, step number three, creating folders. In order to create folders in our organization, we need to have folder admin permissions or folder admin role in our IAM console. Now we are going to add that specific role to one of our users or to ourselves. Now this user admin at the rate of vspox.com can create folders. Now go to manage resources and create the same as per our architecture diagram. In our case, we are going to create test and research folder under vsparks.com. It's done now. Now it's time to create projects. Since we have a single billing account, by default, the created projects will be attached to that billing account. We will go back to our console. Now select create project. Mention the project name and the project ID and select create. This project ID is unique across the Google Cloud platform and it cannot be changed later. Once this project is created, we have to move it to the respective folders as it will not be part of any folder structure. Now we are going to move the project YouTube to the test folder. Once it is moved, just refresh the page. Now you can see the YouTube project is visible under the test folder. Finally, 
check whether the billing is enabled for YouTube project in the billing section. Yeah, you can see the billing account is tagged to the YouTube project and thereon you can create the GCP resources beneath the YouTube project. Step number five, creating resources under YouTube project. We can see on the top that we are in the YouTube project. If not, please select the appropriate project. Now we are good to create our resources under this YouTube project. Well, that's it for this lecture. This is the summary that we have discussed so far in this video. Thank you from vSparks and thank you for watching this video.